So we're now experts in these two signatures of topological superconductivity. Four papillary Johnson effect, quantized Majorana resonance. You would say, well, these are incredibly strong signature effects. It must be hard to make a topological superconductor, but if I have one, I will know. I will know whether it's two pi periodic or four pi periodic. And I will know whether there is this peak at this quantized value of 2e squared over h. Still, if you follow the literature a bit, and, and we will follow the literature a bit in, in, in this course, you'll notice that it's not at all conclusive whether topological superconductors have or have not been realized. And so somehow these effects in, in the real world are, are more tricky than, than, than they appear on the blackboard. And this is, this is a fact. And there are two reasons for that. If I first consider this, this, this four pi periodic Joseon effect, you would say, OK, easy enough. I, I start somewhere. I, 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 let's start here. This, this is supposedly, supposedly to be the, the, the four pi periodic effect. I start here. I wind the phase, incrementing the flux. I wind the phase. I inc increment the phase by 2 pi. And then I, I see whether I'm back to where I started or not. And the problems, there are two problems. First, you want to do it kind of slowly, because you want to follow this branch. But if you do it too slowly, what will happen is that electrons will leak in or leak out. There's always some reservoir, some metallic structure in the neighborhood. You cannot really avoid that. The technical term in this field is electron poisoning or quasi-particle poisoning, because it poisons the effect you're after. Why does it poison the effect? Because if you're here, and an electron comes in or an electron comes out, chick, you drop back to the other level. And you see if you drop back, now all of a sudden you're 2 pi periodic. So this quasi-particle poisoning is your enemy. And the time scales for this are kind of longish, but not too long. And so you want to do it quickly enough. But now comes the other problem. Suppose you do this quickly. And suppose actually you, you, you were, it was a mistake and, and, and you did not have a, you did not have a, a, a topological superconductor. If, let, let me allow me to, to stay with this one here, because that's kind of easy. But suppose it actually looked like this. There was, a, it, it, there was no crossing at all. The number of crossings was zero. So it's even number. So it's, it's not topological. There's an even number, zero. OK, so let's, let's see if it works. I go not, not, not too slowly, kind of fast. I want to avoid this quasi-particle poisoning. There's this gap here. But you know what? If, if you are fast enough, you can tunnel through a gap. This is called. Landau Zener tunneling. So if you go fast enough, you tunnel through the gap, end up here, oh, four pi periodic. And so th this is the problem. You cannot do it too slow because of quasi particle poisoning, you cannot do it too fast because of Landau Zener tunneling, and this is somehow, it's, okay, it's, it's a bit of a mess. It's not I'm not completely hopeless, but it doesn't look too hopeful. So now we go to the other effects, right? This, this zero mode is resonance at zero with a quantized conductance. That's cool. Quantized conductance should be able to measure that. Well, it's quantized uh, in the calculation uh, you did, zero temperature. And um, in, in real world, where it's finite temperature, plus the resonance is kind of narrow. And this is what temperature does. It smears the resonance. And so this peak drops. And it can drop quite a lot, actually. So then all you see is peak. Well, you say, OK, I still see a peak. And we actually have one example <coughs> of another particle. I mean, remember, we're hunting for Majorana fermions, right? So there's another particle which was uh, found uh, <coughs> one or two years ago. By looking at peaks, that was the Higgs particle, Higgs boson. They saw some little peak, and they said, that's the Higgs. And it was the Higgs. And how, do, how can one be so sure? Because this is a field, particle physics, where we do calculations with many decimal places. And so we have a peak, the right position, right width, right height. Now, this is condensed matter physics. In condensed matter physics, you know, factors of two is already pretty good. We don't have decimal places at our disposal. So just seeing a peak, not having it being at the quantized value, Oh, there are many explanations for that. There are many mechanisms which would give you a peak unrelated to this Majorana story. And so now, now I'll give you a little bit of my personal perspective on how this field might develop. And I think that what we really need is to enter into a direction in condensed matter where we can do calculations to decimal places. I, I know of just one such topic, one such subfield, and that's the quantum Hall effect. In the quantum Hall effect, as you know or may know, the the conductance is quantized and can be measured with many decimal places, 10 to the minus 8 accuracy. So once we're in this regime, Mormon's in the regime of the quantum Hall effect, more specifically in this particular case, the quantum spin Hall effect, then I think we're really in good shape to do measurements with the same type of accuracy, some decimal places that will be able to allow us to say, this is the Majorana signature and not something else. But that's something that time will tell.